We have talked on this program now uh, already, I think, uh, once or twice uh, in 2019 and at the end of, uh, of 2018. And that is um, indicative of something else that seems to be uh, the rate of increase seems to be on the uptick. Um, you mentioned in your piece in, uh, in the Jacobin that um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released the official strike data for 2018. What was the verdict? Yeah, the verdict is quite clear. At the, 2018 saw the largest number of workers on strike since 1986. So it's, uh, there was a, some debate last year about whether or not there was a strike wave. Was it just a blip? And so now we have the official statistics, and it's quite clear that this is a historic upsurge uh, that we haven't seen in decades. Yeah. Now, 1986, I mean, just to, to, to remind uh, some of our younger um, uh, listeners, was during the Reagan era where really the, um, the, uh, the, the breaking of the strike and really the firing of the air traffic controllers for many people marked the, uh, the beginning of, and I don't think it was specifically uh, the beginning of the end. It was sort of like uh, maybe slightly into uh, the, the end of, um, or I should say, the, the, the beginning of the uh, slow shrinkage of, of strike uh, of, of union members in this country. And uh, so uh, 2018, it was a huge year, and the 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 biggest sort of single participants in terms of 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 job was teachers yeah overwhelmingly yes yeah. so teachers far and away uh surpassed other sectors although healthcare workers um also played a very important role and it, it, it's significant it's worth saying that um you know these are professions that are predominantly women and so there's a real uh, working class female leadership right now in the strike wave, which is a contrast, I think, going back to the 80s. Uh, a lot of the strikes that you saw in the 80s, as you sort of mentioned, were really defensive struggles of uh, older industrial unions, largely male uh, in you know big industry, that were in a lot of times forced to go on strike by the boss's offensive. So this actually is a different dynamic in which uh, workers are more aggressively, proactively trying to fight for their rights and not just responding to what the bosses are doing to them. It also occurs to me, too, that these are uh, professions where you your relationship to the uh, there is a there's a there's a sort of, a, I guess, a uh, public there's a relationship to the public that is um, I don't want to say unique, but is different um, insofar as. Um, we've seen uh, teachers will get support, and we'll talk about this in the context of this latest strike that is ongoing at the moment. Uh, but teachers get support from parents, from their students, and from the the broader community. I imagine there, with healthcare workers too, we have a similar dynamic where the patients and their families are also. Um, sort of, I guess, natural allies without having to have a, a labor solidarity necessarily with folks. And it also is um, a, a, a consistent with the phenomena of the growth of, of, uh, social, uh, of social justice unionism. Um, how much, define that term for us a little bit, if you don't mind, and, and how much of that is at play here? Right. So, the, the term social justice unionism can refer to a few different things, but, but really uh, at its heart, uh, it means that unions fight not just for the demands of their own members, but really for the broader working class and community generally. So uh, in traditionally for, for the last decades, at least, the kind of more business unionist, uh, moderate labor officials had a bread and butter type, uh, at best, really, bread and butter type unionism in which they would fight, uh, or to be honest, not often fight, uh, but at least nominally say that they were pushing for you know better wages and working conditions, which are extremely important and which remain extremely important, including in these teacher strikes, as the centrality of pay shows. But I think what makes them different, as you mentioned, is that yeah, there's a clear focus in all of these teacher strikes and then also in the healthcare strikes around uh, tying together the demands of workers uh, at a given workplace with things like lower class sizes, uh, like we saw in L.A., or uh, lower uh, nurse-to-patient ratios in a lot of hospital strikes. 
And it's a really significant development because if other workers can start doing a similar, uh, making a similar message and putting that out there, then that's the type of basis you'll see for a real broad working class upsurge. So these were the types of uh, politics that were put forward in the 1930s. It's not new, uh, but it was lost. And um, I, I should add, too, before we, we talk about the specifics of the Denver's teachers' strike, and also, uh, you know, I think the last time we spoke was during the uh, L.A. teachers' strike, which has since um, uh, ended. But we should also note, too, that in the context of the government shutdown, to a large extent, I think the underreported story and the the uh, least trumpeted story of the ending of the shutdown was a function of labor action by some TSA folks, some uh, air traffic controllers, and uh, a statement of solidarity by a uh, a private union, that being the flight attendants union. This week. They announced that they would not be messing around. They were preparing for a a, uh, uh, a a job action in the event that the federal government was to shut down. And this is a union that is not even a f- our federal employees. Um, give me your your sense of 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 uh, how that um, how that plays into what we're seeing here too. And we should also note. And and I, I'm not sure of this, but I suspect that the flight attendants union is also predominantly female. Yeah, so it's just, it's worth underlining what uh, interesting and kind of amazing moment in U.S. history and labor history we're in right now. Uh, so things like this uh, don't happen very often. So when they do, it, it is, I think, as you mentioned, uh, worth really underscoring how big a deal they are. So, yeah, the, the, the shutdown was ended by workers calling in sick. And it was ended because, as you mentioned, the flight attendants union uh, started organizing, not just threatening, but started organizing uh, for job actions. And it goes back to the question uh, that you raised earlier, which is that they were fighting not only for their own demands, but actually fighting for uh, working people generally, because their main message uh, was that because of the federal shutdown, which was putting an uh, inordinate burden on uh, workers because they had to work several jobs because they wouldn't get paid for their federal job, uh, what that meant it was actually creating a safety hazard both for flight attendants and for passengers. So you see a similar messaging as far as connecting uh, worker demands to broader working class demands. And as you noted, uh, again, predominantly female, and they won. Uh, the Trump administration actually had to admit that it was because of the looming uh, shutdowns of airports, people might remember LaGuardia was closed, uh, that they pulled back on the shutdown. So there's big lessons there because the progressive movement, you know, for years has tried to figure out, well, how do we, how do we win? And, and it's not always clear. And I think what these recent work stoppages have shown is that there really is no power greater than withholding your labor at work. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a, uh, a break, uh, Eric. And when we come back, let's talk about the resolution of the LA teachers strike, the ongoing Denver's teachers strike and the potential for future strikes uh, in this sector. I mean, it's uh, it's only the, the the second week of February, and we've already seen um, uh, multiple major strikes uh, across the country. And I think um, uh, we can look back on the in the summer uh, from last year, where we had these strikes in these red states that I think. Um, both encourage what we're seeing now and we're a foreshadowing of what we're seeing. we got to take a quick break. I'll be right back. This is Ring of Fire Radio. 